The Department of Homeland Security plays a crucial role in safeguarding the United States from threats both foreign and domestic. In the Arctic, distances are vast, infrastructure is sparse, and conditions can be extreme and harsh. And due to distance, response times can be long and mistakes can be costly. Alaska's sheer size is twice that of Texas. With over 6,600 miles of coastline, it poses a constant challenge to monitoring, situational awareness, and coordinated response. The DHS mission focuses on customs and border security, emergency management, infrastructure protection, counter-narcotics, and national resilience. Yet current systems struggle to integrate local knowledge, geopolitical intelligence, and operational readiness into one streamlined tool. In order to use this information in the Arctic, the DHS and its components, such as Customs and Border Patrol, CISA, FEMA, TSA, and the U.S. Coast Guard, needs a common collection in a way to visualize a large amount of data quickly to assess mission, response, logistics, and barriers. This multifaceted research project is designed to address the complex challenges of Arctic security and resilience through an integrated approach that synthesizes local experience, stakeholder interactions, in system-wide analysis. The first part of the project addresses the situational awareness and decision support through partnership with NOAA's IRMA, the Environmental Response Management application. The project enhances Arctic-specific visualization capabilities. In order to display meaningful information, the project is working with the IRMA website to develop its capabilities in the Arctic with fast access maps, data overlays, and historic trends to support rapid decision-making in remote context. This phase of the project will quickly create visualizations for the challenges being faced in the Arctic. These maps and data points contribute not just to the current information, but also historic knowledge that might prove crucial for navigating the present and the future. Workshops foster cross-sector collaboration and knowledge exchange building a trusted network of local and regional experts that DHS can engage during a crisis. The workshops also bring people together to learn about the challenges that may be faced when responding in order to improve tools, whether it's cultural traditions or knowledge, economic challenges, or any other piece of data that can contribute to our holistic understanding of the Arctic. So the kinds of things that you'll see, for example, in IRMA, the Environmental Response Management application, will be the base layer of roads, uh, then there'll be a layer on top of that that might show um, infrastructure. Where are the, the sewer lines? Where are the water lines? Then there will can be another layer that shows uh, where are all of the uh, places where oil or fuel hazardous materials are stored. All of those things will be layers and you can call up those layers and then overlay the ones that you want to see the relationships of. The second part of the project is designed to collect, compile, and analyze policies, geopolitics, and strategic postures of Arctic and non-Arctic nations with growing stakes in the region. By compiling this information, a snapshot of each nation's current rhetoric is presented to bring officials up to speed about any potential challenges or threats. From energy exploration to shipping lanes to military positioning, DHS needs a forward-looking lens on how foreign interests might evolve and how those interests could impact U.S. sovereignty in Arctic operations. The information is evaluated and displayed in a way to give the decision maker better understanding of the focus each nation has for the far north. This helps to spot potential concepts that might not have been considered previously. The potential for conflict has been growing through the years, and the ability to look for patterns in their rhetoric could help to ease tensions or serve as warnings of any ill intent. These insights are synthesized into digestible profiles and threat assessments, giving DHS leaders a situational snapshot that informs long-term planning and real-time decision-making. We are going to try to answer what-if questions. For example, it's a very hot topic right now, talking about how many cutters, uh, like icebreakers, that uh, the U.S. is uh, going to be built, uh, considering the geopolitical tensions in this region. So our, one of the potential output of the model is to try to un answer what if questions, what if we're building one or two or three or four in the next five, ten years, how this will change the geographical and the geopolitical tensions in this region. 
I think as we're getting uh, underway with the project and, and really really getting our, our feet uh, wet and dirty here, what we're noticing is there's, there's a lot of, of untapped uh, problems that we can really pursue and what we're really identifying right now is which ones are most important, first of all, uh, for the region and then for ADAC Arctic and, and us in terms of our academic curiosity, what we would like to pursue for. The overall framework, this is, this is research and, and methodologies that we've used before, it's general. Um, meaning that if we address a problem in years one and two, and then more problems come down, then the methodology, the framework can be picked up and, and kind of set down to address more problems down the road. The third phase of the project leverages tabletop exercises and scenario-based simulations grounded in game theory to practice, experiment, and plan for potential crises in the future. Game theory is one of the most crucial elements to this framework. It takes past data and uses it to drive roleplay settings that allow for planning sessions through theoretical scenarios. This will be evaluated in light of social sciences to help participants consider the potential issues posed when operating in different communities, as well as other information that is not easily gleaned from maps. These training environments highlight interdependencies and vulnerabilities, allowing teams to pressure test plans and enhance interagency coordination in advance of crises rather than in its aftermath. So we're approaching this kind of one step at a time. We're having conversations now about how to scope an initial set of complex problems and an initial set of stakeholders who might be trying to navigate them and then we'll help them. But then we can expand that out as people interact with those visuals or with that data or with that simulation. They can say, well, we kind of feel like we actually need to be paying more attention to this other set of issues. So there's opportunities now to map out the data sources, the stakeholders, the issue areas, and then incorporate that into more training assets, uh, more planning assets. One Arctic community is going to have different issues than someone in a different Arctic community. Um, so we are trying to address those issues in a sense that allows us to apply it to all of the Arctic, but also understand the complexity of these specific communities and issue areas. This multi-stake framework provides DHS with a purpose-built toolkit to navigate Arctic complexities with agility and confidence. It closes mission-critical gaps by fusing operational tools, geopolitical insight, and social context into a unified system of understanding. This project is geared to create a decision tree for local, tribal, state, and federal officials and workers. This can be used to resolve situations as much as give useful information for local responders to manage it until state or federal help arrives. In any situation that results in decision-making, whether it's natural disasters, economic endeavors, or illegal activity, problems like these can be managed more effectively through the multi-stakeholder framework. The Arctic is not just a distant frontier, it's an emerging front line. As foreign interests and global instability impact the far north, DHS has to be prepared to lead with precision, adaptability, and informed confidence. This is not just a research project, it is an operational asset that's bridging silos and enhancing resilience, building tools for the Arctic today so that we can meet the threats of tomorrow, no matter how far north the challenges lie.